Hello my soccer universe to the longer video on the Europa League and boy what an evening it was 27 goals across 8 games only 1 nil nil and we had a 1-6 goal game in there uh, with a major upset we had two absolutely nuts games in there as well and loads of interesting results the Europa League playoffs definitely delivered on all fronts and as a Milan fan I enjoyed it because it was an easy win it was a comfortable win and it had a few nice goals in there as well while the action and the suspense was probably in other places and that's also quite nice with it as i did for the champions league um review i want to actually start this video on where we were ahead of uh this round because you know last time we talked about it we just had to draw and many many things have changed and while the top six remained rather constant we saw that you know the lisbon teams were moving up Villarreal and roma having had a bad form moving down in the overall standings as om who had kind of a rough shape too um this is basically in terms of rankings just uh, for your information the, mo the best movers were liverpool because they have been winning 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 young boys Lance and leverkusen also in the top whereas the biggest losers were braga stadren Villarreal, and slavia and i think stadren mostly do that milan actually also were having quite the rise which definitely hampered their chances now Going into it, I think the biggest tie is also the first one that they were talking about. Feyenoord against Roma. Again, the one tie that I honestly I'm tired of seeing. Yes, I think though, uh, it's always exciting games, but I know there's so much animosity between those two uh, fan bases. And also, you know, we have seen this now three times for the third time. Yeah, at least there's not no Mourinho there. So in that sense, I think the heat is a little bit taken out of the tie as well. Because Daniel De Rossi definitely more a likable guy than Jose Mourinho. Um, I have to say this one was a brilliant jersey matchup. Uh, Feyenoord in the home colors and Roma black shirts and white on the, on the bottom. I have to say it looks really, really, really cool. Uh, and the game itself was also, I mean, I think Roma had, had more of the first half that much for sure um and it was a little bit i guess a run of play when just before halftime Igor Peshaw uh, heads in a hartman cross Igor Peshaw, teeny tiny uh man left alone in the box and he scored last time also the winner uh at the, the kaip against roma so kind of a weird one there we had leandro paredes hitting the cross but we had dibala missing a few chances so um roma was in in, in control of that game and so it was only fair that Lukaku with the shoulder um, punches in a Spinazzola cross and gives, gets the 1-1. One, one. Uh, the game could have really swung then in the end either way, but I think the draw is a fair result. The draw is definitely a result that is more in favor of Roma than it is of Feyenoord, uh, given how Roma can actually do quite some damage at home. Then probably the craziest match of the evening uh, happened between Galatasaray and Sparta Praha. Um, Demirbay gave uh, Galatasaray the lead, but this was an open up and down match and uh, it was only uh, largely caught that Preciado uh, gets an equalizer for Sparta right after the half. Uh, however, you know, not only was it an up and down match, it was also the defending was all, all optional. I mean, the, the way they forgot Mertens uh, to put in the goal in the 60th minute, you thought, Gala are cruising at the moment, but then Nelson sends it off with a red card and a few minutes later Kuchta uh, converts to make it 2-2. Sparta with, with a man up, they might actually push forward for the win. Fortunately, that Rinesh is also sent off for a yellow red after an elbow and so it goes 2-2 close to stoppage time. Sparta have the mega chance, it's a 2 on 1 and the guy doesn't see, see the pass and so uh, he just hits Muslera and right on the other side Icardi uh, very nonchalantly puts in the winner I think this tie was super entertaining it is wide open and there was more to come in uh, in the return like in Prague I think this really can swing either way another really crazy one was Schachter against OM OM not having the greatest of times Schachter the better one uh, scoring action early goal um, that was, I, I think, the 
advantage rule was not applied correctly there uh, as well. Uh, all the said wouldn't OM make the mistake if they knew that this was not an advantage. So that's the give and go, but you know, the referee definitely has to uh, keep the game on. Uh, Schachter having more chances, uh, but then Obama Young uh, puts in a Klaus Cross in the 64th minute. I've almost meet immediately Matvienko can equalize and so the game remains to finally in balance game played in hamburg by, by the way dylan jay uh again obama young assisting there or in the in the build up there also was i think obama young is now um the highest europa league scorer some something like that i heard uh should should, should, should check it before that um but in jay uh gets the go ahead goal for om who seemingly get a lucky away win against Schachter. But the AGA Ginaldo three minutes later heads in the header, so two more or less stoppage time goals make it a 2 2 game. Rather exciting one at that. Then eBay hosting Sporting. Yeah, we knew that Sporting are flying in Liga Portugal. eBay is flying in uh, Switzerland. But two, to be fair, Sporting are the better team in the show. Yes, it doesn't help if you're the first goal is an own, own goal and Gyokares converts a penalty. Ugrinich pulls you back. But the right after Inacio makes it 3-1, then uh, later on you get a red card. It was not eBay's day. And yes, probably will have one more time an eBay jersey in my review videos. But hey, so be it. What can I tell you about Milan's comfortable 3-0 win over Sadren? Except that it was comfortable. It was actually a very weird, weird game. You know, I did not watch the entire game. I watched um, uh, where they, the goal show where there's... Uh, a switch back and forth it was only four games that they chose uh, every time over both competitions and every time i saw it it was basically milan whole have having a ball in their own defense and passing it passing it and making kind of these u-shaped attacks but if you know milan it goes then not necessarily u-shaped it's very much tilting towards the left side where of course the Ananas and leao are there but uh with this patience and not risking too much they actually had the game very well under control. Leao, uh, early on, hits already the crossbar. It was a deflected shot. Uh, then I think there was a shot, a shot by Tijani, right, uh, right But then in the end, all this focus on, on the left side allowed Florenzi to make a cross. Everyone's focusing on Giroud, and Ruben Loftus cheek is free. Beautiful header. 1-0. I actually think whenever uh, uh, Ruben scores, I always think it's Giroud. At first, because they look rather similar the way that they <laughs> score the goals and eight and nine, also not too dissimilar, especially in the weird uh, font that Serie A uh, uses. Yes, Burigo had a shot in there, so uh, it was not all smooth sailing for for, for Milan, but the lead was very well deserved. And then in the second half, uh, it's a corner cor kick. The Kier gets on the back; it bounces above the whole Rendi fan unsorted and Loftus Tree can just head head it in from close range 2-0 game done and then the goal of the evening already three minutes uh, six minutes later it was uh where Leao has a ball back heels it into the path of the Hernandez who, who gives it back to Leao who nonchalantly twists his uh foot to pull it into the white corner uh it was actually really technically a, a really nice action 3-0 for Milan I think I think at that point, if they would have played on, they probably could have really um, gotten way more out of that. On the on the other, I think when it was two 0 I said, "Please make it three 0 I have been burned so often with Milan having leads, uh, but with the three 0 you look rather safe in Ren. Of course, you need to play at home, but uh, the dominance they had showed should give you loads of confidence going forward. Befica against Toulouse was a weird one. I mean, Toulouse held their own despite Befica largely controlling the game and Befica only winning thanks to two penalties uh, that were given. Um, and Di Maria then convert also in kind of iffy fashion. I mean, one down the middle, this the second one, the goalie stays in the middle and Di Maria puts it a little bit to the right of him. Yeah, um, to be fair, the equalizer through Desla came then out of nowhere. Benfica created more chances. Uh, and once they were 1 0 down, Toulouse said, Yeah, we have nothing to, to lose here. We got the equalizer. Uh, in the end, I think the win for Benfica was deserved, but it keeps things wide open. And this is a Toulouse team I don't rate highly. Absolutely. I mean, having seen them twice against Lusk, I think Lusk was in both games 
both they lost, but in both games they were the better team overall. Uh, how this team beat Liverpool, how they're just hanging with Benfica is a little bit beyond me. So let's see where this is going. The shock of the evening happened in Braga. I mean, Braga, Braga is not in a good shape. They just lost 5-0 to Sporting. So uh, it doesn't come as a total surprise that they are not managing uh, against Karabakh. But the Karabakh wins 4-2 in Portugal. That's definitely a, a surprise. I mean, Jan Jankovic gives an early goal. Banza equals before the half, but it's really the second half. Where Zubir, Juninho and again Zubir uh, make it a 4-1 lead and only a late Moutinho penalty. Yes, that Moutinho uh, makes it a more palatable scoreline, but Braga is more or less out. And then uh, loss against Freiburg, 0-0 doesn't really tell the story of this game. This was an open game, there were chances created. I think it was more falling towards Freiburg, I think Schala even hit the uh, crossbar at the point. So uh, it was not a bad game at all. There was also a, a big saving action from uh, Kevin Danzo off the cross uh, from the line where I think you surely thought that Freiburg will take the lead. But then out of nowhere, more or less, I, I don't have to say out of nowhere, I mean Lars was in there, it was just that Freiburg was the slightly better team. Haidara puts one in and it's a really, really weird one because the ball bounces off seemingly of his chest in, 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 in the goal. And then there are two offenses. I mean, first of all, the referee thinks it's uh, with the hand, which I'm not 100% sure to be honest, but most crucially there was an offside very close to the touchline uh, that makes that uh, this allows the goal and so Lars and Freiburg ended on a nil-nil draw advantage Freiburg so if we look now at the favorites in this competi um, in, in this comp competition Milan now that they are through the next round finally rise up before that they were a little bit lower I would actually agree that Milan is probably the third best team in there although there's also Atalanta and Atalanta have Milan beaten already twice so let's see about that but if I look at, at, at the names and the uh, uh, squad, I will put Liverpool and Leverkusen ahead of Milan. And I'm afraid that Milan, if they should they advance, and most likely 99% they will advance, they will face one of those two. And this will be a really, really, really tough draw. It has to be said, but hey, that's the competition rules or the seeding rules uh, for the Europa League. So, uh, but Milan now moving up almost level with Leverkusen. And I think uh, if they are through, they're probably uh, close with them. But you see already the chances of Leverkusen advancing to qualify are much higher than for Milan. Liverpool, of course, by far the strongest team in that uh, one. Atalanta Brighton, I find very in interesting. Also West Ham in there and then the two Port Portuguese giants. Roma, yes, at, at the moment they have a 64% chance of uh, advancing. I think if Roma would advance, they would also, of course, rise up a teeny little bit. So they're also having the advantage there. The return legs are played next week. The late slots will take the early early, early slots. So we have uh, Rennes against Milan. This is the one that I'm most interested in already at uh, 6.45. But I think the pra uh, Sparta against Galak Gala and Roma against Feyenoord, those are the really, really interesting ones. I mean, OM against Schachter was also quite nice. So looking forward to, to, to the fixed fixtures. And then, yeah, I'm already some trepidation ahead of the draw. But let's not worry about it now for now. Milan looks safe going on, and I say this knowing that in the past Milan have squandered big leads. Any case, please let, let me know what you thought about the games. Yeah, I guess they give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Talk to you soon about more in my soccer universe. Bye! Hey there! I really hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.